Hello, sweetest potatoes. Conventional habits are fundamental. Drink warm water, exercise, journal, meditate, rest, eat nourishing foods. Now that we got that covered, let's talk about unconventional habits that we've yet to hear people talk about online. And today we have a very special friend, Leah from Leah's Field Notes, one of my favorite humans to exist on this planet. She's the most gentle soul I've ever met, who's wise beyond her years with such a genuine curiosity and zest for life that's absolutely infectious. Simultaneously, my Mei Mei and my Jie Jie, who's far more connected with her Yourself, present and grounded. I trust you've all come across her content by now and if you haven't, I promise you'll love meeting her. Now, let us spill some wholesome blue lotus flower tea, shall we? Here are six unconventional habits that will get progressively more and more juicy. The last one is something I've never mentioned ever on my channel and it may be worth staying for. Okay. to spill the tea yeah my unconventional habit is that i like to eat bland food when i'm by myself i think in the past i've definitely used food as comfort sometimes to an unhealthy extent can relate yeah, yeah i feel like it created a very turbulent relationship mm -hmm. with food and i want to make sure that i feel good not because of my food but because of like life. I mean, I love good food. Mm -hmm. I love presentation. I love beautiful spaces, yeah. but I don't want to get myself into the space where I only can be in those nice spaces. Mm -hmm. This thing that my mom always told me growing up, your external environment reflects your internal mind. Every productivity girly on here says the same thing. But then <laughs> I would get like that to an unhealthy extent where I'm like, should be working, but I'm organizing the colors of my closet <laughs> or like my underwear. And honestly, I still like having my underwear, bolded calamari, yeah. very organized, yeah. color coded, but also if something in my life were to be messy and things don't go to that, I'm still feeling chill. Mm. Like I'm not affected by yeah. that. I want to feel like you can take away everything from mm -hmm. me and I would still be like mm. happy. Mm. So food, environment, routines, routines, anything. Yeah. Aww. And I think it's like the attachment to routines is what leads to disappointment and anxiety when mm -hmm. we don't do that thing. Mm -hmm. Rather than I think for you, it's more of you just want this constant state of being that comes from within. Mm. Yeah. This is why you're my jie, jie sometimes. <laughs> you're my jie, jie. So, ro ro ho what's something that you do? What's your unconventional habit number? Numero dos. dos. As I've gotten older, I try to recreate emotions that I feel and think of how I can gift that to other people. Mm. So for example, when you meet up with a friend, they randomly show up with a gift and it's like the smallest thing, but it's so thoughtful. When you get it, you're just like, for me? But what did I do? It's not my birthday. <laughs> you know, like, what is the special occasion? Yeah. One day I was just like, what if I just start bringing a little gift to meet anyone that I'm seeing? Mm -hmm. Granted, like, I don't see many people. <laughs> so, like, it's not that many gifts. First time I did it, the person was so happy and so touched. The second time, it just, like, positively snowballs to the point where I'm like, I'm gonna be that person now and i think those gifts can look different too yeah. i like practical gifts so sometimes when i go to friends i like bringing groceries or bringing yeah. food he brought groceries last night for us to bake bring a mango <laughs> anything yeah. it's just like that thoughtfulness it's you doing it because you want to and it just it just ends there. When I was younger, there would be a lot of strings attached to it. I'm doing this for you, so I'm like keeping tabs, mm. secretly expecting something from you. I just want to do this, period. The mm. Heart meaning. Yeah. Like your intention, like a yeah. pure intention. Yeah. If your natural state is just giving without expectation, then I think good things will come back to you in other ways. Speaking of gifts, you know what's a great gift to give? Wow. A gift that I've always wanted to have? A gift of Case to five, protect your phone today. Let's throw it over to... Thank you, Leah. Whenever I'm thinking of what to get friends, I generally lean towards the more aesthetically pleasing yet functional necessity side. I think a gift should be equally practical, useful, and also joy sparking because if things don't spark joy, then what's the point of it? And I think necessities are great because every day that they use something, like a phone case, they'll be like, 
Aww, my friend gave this to me. I actually got this case during Black Friday myself before Case Defy reached out to work together. And guys, green in general is such a vibe. It's bold yet calming and it's bright yet unassuming. These are all just things that I would like to embody more of. And since Leah with an E already has a Case Defy case, I got my other Leah with an I a matching puffy phone case in her color of the year, which is lilac and see. Look how happy she is. For the ultimate protection because unconventional habit 2.5 is to take good care of your things. Caseify also has bounce cases with expanded corners that can withstand drops from up to 21 feet. They also partner with a worldwide community of artists to create thousands of unique designs to fit all your moods and looks. If any of these cases spark joy, you can get 15% off at caseify.com slash Rowena. Now back to the living room. Unconventional habit numero Oh. Our lives are literally like Minecraft mm -hmm. in that you can choose to build or take away whatever that you want. And I think this thought alone is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Yeah, it's very liberating. I remember, I think it was like a Colin and Samir mm -hmm. video mm -hmm. where they were talking about Frank Ocean, how oh, he doesn't yeah. tour, he's very low key, which is just like not what artists usually are. They make yeah. a lot of money from touring and doing these things. And they're like, they make the most money from touring. Yeah, they're like, how yeah. does he do this? Like, how is he just like drop off the planet, whatever? The truth is, you just have to be okay with not making that much money. And I think so many things are in life are like that. It's like you could actually just not do that or do that you have the power you have the agency to choose i think that's the most powerful thing this element of choice if you're able to put yourself in these not as comfortable situations the more you do it the more you're exposed to it the more you'll realize but wait i can actually i can actually make decisions for myself for all of our life it's oh can i do this like can i go play with my friends can i go to a sleepover can i do this but yeah. like you're an adult now as you get you old, can do whatever you want yeah Ding! Nice. The next point. I think a wonderful habit to have is to spill your own tea and Need let tea. everyone else have the chance to spill their own tea. Instead of spilling each other's tea. Exactly. In English, it basically means when someone does something that really bothers me, I try to find out why it's bothering me. And usually a lot of times it's maybe a shadow that I'm suppressing. That's something that I do or I'm trying to suppress doing and seeing other people do it triggers something in me. So a lot of times could either go and rant about someone. I could also talk to a friend and be like, hey, like I noticed this person doing this and it kind of bothers me what is it in me that's being mm. triggered yeah. i think that's a good way to present it because we can't change anyone else except for ourselves and people are going through their own thing they act out in whatever way they need to but we can determine how we respond to it how we are affected by it i'm still very much like an externalized thinker i mm -hmm. need to talk to people or even like talk to a camera or write in a journal about something to find clarity but i think the way we approach it can mm -hmm. be more intrinsic rather yeah. than that person's doing that yeah. and that's Bad. I think that's very interesting because before I would also externally process with other people It would just be trying to get them to see my side, right? So I think yeah that last part bringing it back to yourself and how you can improve that will make a world's difference It's really hard to it's so it's hard. very scary especially in the heat of the moment mm -hmm. And especially when you're just like I don't, it's not me. Yeah, it's you not never me. you never want it to yeah. be yourself, no, right? Me, like you don't be. want in trouble, but I think taking the courage to talk to someone you trust whether it's like a parent or a best friend i think it is really valuable mm. beautiful oh, thank you. another unconventional habit that's really good is being open to making friends who are very different from yourself mm -hmm. whether it's an age range or hobbies and professions mm -hmm. because i think it does keep you a lot more open-minded to the world i like having friends that are finance bros i mean you guys all know leah but if you don't know leah she's like the most mossy chill artsy is mossy a good word mossy, mossy is, is chill, chill right yeah okay. you're like a like very nature. chill grounded person when she's like i'm gonna go sail the world she'll literally go learn how to sail and sail the world when she's like i want to work on a farm i wake up at 6 a.m or even earlier at the butt crack of dawn to go 
tend to the garden like she'll actually do that and she did do that just painting a little picture for you guys for the finance bros <laughs> yeah i love having friends who are very different from me who are really passionate about something else yeah. even if i don't really care about crypto yeah. i like talking to people who freaking love yeah. it i think getting that breadth of characters in your life can also give you a lot of different perspective mm -hmm. so something that i've done growing up not really consciously since high school i've always hung out with people who are a little older so you have the foresight into what kind of life they're living and the things that they're going through so that even though you are a few years behind you know this is what's on the horizon and then you can see how they make decisions you can see the mistakes they've made you can see their successes their wins and everything and you can take it as you will you know yeah. like there'll be things that will be helpful there'll be things that won't be but i think to be able to be around people who are older does give you that further breadth of perspective yeah okay well then building off of that my unconventional habit that i've learned from you thankfully you were born onto this earth before me so i have lots to learn from you Aww. and last year um, when I was in New York and I had just gone through a breakup, one thing I learned about you that I had no idea about, and none of them have any idea about, shook with me. We're to spilling the, core. the tea. This gal has been celibate for the past five years and that really blew my mind because growing up christian i always just thought people are celibate or saving themselves for marriage because of religion because of some book that says you have to do this i was like why would anyone willfully do that <laughs> and then hearing your experience of someone who did date did have sex during their your college years seeing that you felt like you weren't doing it for the right reasons or it wasn't serving you and then by your own accord choosing to be celibate blew my mind to be fair, the element of spirituality did help, mm -hmm. even though initially it may have been reconnecting with spirituality and then it basically suggesting as with most traditional spiritual practices to be like, okay, maybe you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Having gone through that and then having gone in a new relationship and being able to see how that played out, I think for myself, it was like definitely the right decision because when I was younger, it was a lot of, because I didn't feel loved in the ways that I wanted to, that was good enough. Physical intimacy became this thing that kind of gave me that validation that I was mm -hmm. seeking that I wasn't getting. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't think it was, like it's not healthy yeah. in any means. To really get to know someone so intimately without actually being intimate, I was mind blown. If I already feel this close to you without the physical part mm -hmm. then maybe this is what all relationships could be mm -hmm. like to have that baseline of connection to feel so loved and so seen and so supported you know like it's like, it's beautiful because yeah. i think it's like growing up before our time the given was to not have sex until you're married mm -hmm. and i think for our generation the given was to have sex in any yeah. relationship so i think just like how maybe our parents or like our grandparents generation never questioned why they waited until marriage our generation never questioned why we are intimate with our partners or like why that's a given growing up with that mentality i also never thought it was an option oh, okay i thought it was just it's kind of like before you talk to me right you also didn't think it was an option to yeah. not do it or even like to do it and choose to not do it yeah. and then do it and also not do yeah. it yeah i think i never th i thought it was just like all in or all out yeah. we're all about questioning and we're all about asking ourselves why if you are intimate and if you do choose to be intimate like why are you really doing it mm. and what i've seen play out in so many of my friends relationships and guys and girls a lot of times it's like they're either doing it for the other person mm -hmm. or they like feel lonely or mm -hmm. they feel empty so mm -hmm. they're like trying to fill their lives with this thing that they think will make them feel better because it's what society is telling you should be doing yeah so i think there's like that side right and like there's right. the other extreme of like, okay if you're not doing it then are you like afraid of intimacy are you like hiding from something are you running away there's all these different spectrums yeah for sure. but i think the the most important thing with anything and with this point is just finding what works for you. We can sit here and be like, celibacy is great, but like do what you want, right? I think like that is the beauty of our Minecraft world is you can pick and choose and like do what you want with that. But I think at the end of the day, the most important thing is knowing who you are and knowing what your values are. Yeah. Thanks. Tee! Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thanks, sis. I appreciate you so much. Mm. <sighs> cheers. Cheers, cheers. <sighs> the only thing I'll take a shot of now. 
Are you drinking ever now? Another unconventional habit is I haven't drank also since 2015. Wow. Any parting words for the potato fam? Love you, my potatoes. <laughs> I'm also a potato. I just want to say that I love potatoing with you. And I harvested potatoes for the first time this past summer. And it's honestly the most satisfying vegetable to harvest. Why? Because you pull out the whole plant. Yeah. And there's just tons of potatoes all wow. underneath. And you dig further and there's more. Potatoes are extremely abundant. Very Resilient, prolific, super easy to grow and yeah. very prolific. So guys, we're very easy to grow Mighty. and we're very prolific. Mm -hmm. Easy to maintain. So what does a potato do when a potato is not feeling the best? Um, I would say a potato should just let itself be, start growing a little bit of sprouts yeah. here and there. You start looking gnarly, right? You're shriveling Aww. a little bit, you're turning green, it's like, <laughs> uh, but just plant yourself back into soil and before you know it, you'll have new shoots and tons and tons of new potatoes. We're not just a potato. We're the potato starter kit. You're the seed. We're the seed to grow many more potatoes. Yeah. Wow. That is so beautiful. Would you like to do the honors of a hug hug and hug the camera? Should yes. we do it together? Yeah. Hug hug guys. Thank you for such a beautiful time, Leah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and make sure to check out her channel for our sleepover. I'm very excited to see how the video will turn out. Me too. <laughs> Come back next month, Mike Rowena. We need to refilm the whole <laughs> we thing. We refilm everything. <laughs> Bye. Bye.